I'm Robert Lipside. Dr. Carlin Coca, author of Sex Pills from A to Z, What Works and What Doesn't, is joined by Dr. Sharna Stryer, our Doctor of Desire, a Manhattan psychologist with a specialization in sex therapy. Welcome back, Sharna. Now, Thank you. Uh, between sex pills and what you're going to talk about, hugging seems to be the spectrum of sexuality, or am I missing something here? No, I would agree. It has <laughs> that rainbow of spectrum. Mm -hmm. I mean, touch is one of the most powerful aphrodisiacs, along with, you know, really being in rapport with the person. It's a silent, powerful communication that you care, that you're there. But, but there are ranges of hugs. I mean, uh, yes. there are all kinds of hugs, and they mean all kinds of things. Absolutely. Um, what, what kind of well, hugs you are you can, talking about? Well, I'm really talking about the range of hugs. I mean, it's a wonderful thing to communicate that you care about someone through a hug. And it could be just friendly and warm and inviting and just really just affectionate. And then there are hugs that linger where you pull that person in and you begin to really sense the kind of signals that they're sending to you and that you're sending back. And you could begin to feel each other. And from there, the hugs can progress. But a hug in and of itself is a wonderful thing, as a matter of fact. I think it's something that really makes a person feel alive and makes a person feel connected. It's very much a part of good health. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side of that, that spectrum, I mean, you had made the point in the previous uh, segment that, that the idea of the quick fix is yeah. something you don't really believe in. I mean, right. I mean, there's something ironic about your title, yeah. about, about the sex yeah. pill. I mean, I think that, that the subject that we're on now of physical touch, I wouldn't just say it's a hug. I'd, I'd broaden the base and say just physical touch of any kind is extremely important. I mean, certainly you can't have a healthy sexual relationship without appropriate physical touch and open physical touch and something where you're conveying intimacy to another person. Very, mm -hmm. very important. Well, this is something that Dr. Stryer has uh, you know, stressed to a great extent in, in, in her, her time here is the idea of, of intimacy and the idea that so much of sexuality for men is really based on their need for touching and intimacy even more than well, the sex pill. Absolutely. I mean, for people, because how do we convey to each other that we're really present, that we really care, that we're really also physically interested? It's really through touch. And so I think that there's a wide range of ways to touch also, and you need to be creative in that, you know, lightly touching, caressing, pressing. A squeezing. I mean, there's all sorts of ways of touching. Now, are you another. basically talking only about you know two people alone in no, an intimate relationship? No, I think that that's just one aspect of it. That's one choice. But I think there's something wonderful about when you greet someone to really uh, greet them with a hug. That it usually involves pulling that person towards you and sort of exchanging some kind of squeeze that goes along and with And yet it. this is very nuanced. I mean, you have to really uh, yes. know who you're hugging and yes. how far you go with a and hug. And you also have to sense their readiness for it because it is something that involves mutuality. You don't push yourself on someone, so you wait for those signals. Or you might even say, can I give you a hug? Mm -hmm. And that way you really clarify the permission. And most people really absolutely appreciate that because you could get very accustomed going through your day and not being touched and not even realize you miss it until finally mm -hmm. someone reaches out and touches well, you. Well, I mean, more you. and more I've found in, in my life people say, I, you know, even sometimes on the telephone, I need a hug. Exactly. You know I mean, which, which is kind of almost shorthand now and for it's, some support or a Exactly. Mm -hmm. For that sense of, you know, I need to know that someone's there, that I'm not alone, that mm -hmm. I, you know, that someone really cares. Do you hug, Dr. Cook? Are you a hugger? Oh, I'm a hugger. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, going back to what you were saying, I think that the idea of sex pill should not be considered a bad word. I mean, take, for example, Viagra. I mean, all the hugs in the world are not going to help some of my patients that have real sexual dysfunction and Viagra has been an absolutely liberating experience for them and mm -hmm. it's really made quite a difference. As a matter of fact, prior to Viagra for some of my patients, um, they viewed the hugs as being almost stressful because they felt that there were expectations of them and whether that's correct or not, that's how they felt. Well, and mm. Yeah, you see the bridge is how you think about all of that. You see the bridge is the attitude. If you really sort of immerse yourself in the sensory-based feelings and really sort of think about more erotic things, certainly the sex pills can be an adjunct. And the attitude can really be the most important aspect yeah, of the I think expression. You make a, a, it's a very, very good and point. And without it be an that, yeah. 
without that, it doesn't work. Then you're, then you're going to become dependent on that pill. But if you know that it, you're really the center, that it's really you and it's the relationship, and sure, it might be important to really add certain things that bolster but, your but let's, but let's well, let's talk, no, let's talk about that, what, what Dr. Coco was talking about, where that hug you know, becomes, there's a hint of demand to sure. it that can't be met. I mean, let's, let, let's not confuse the issue. I mean, there's real physiology. There's real medicine oh, here. There are people that have uh, imbalances. There are people that have dysfunction, and it's a real physiologic thing, and it needs to be treated. It absolutely needs to be treated. And when you treat absolutely. that, you can see the magic unfold in a relationship, and it's a beautiful it thing. It sure, couples of all them, ages. It gives them um, that and it, it and it's a very real a thing. It's not all up here that they're somehow not doing something right. I mean, there are people with real medical problems, no, and it should be emphasized. No, it's the combination. That's what I'm saying. It's an adjunct. It's a, a marriage of two things. If there's a physiological, physiological problem, that needs to be addressed. But I don't think it's either or. I think it works in combination. Well, this is our uh, mind-body uh, together <laughs> here. Uh, it, it has to come together in what way? It has to come together in, even in the context of even taking a pill, you still can have performance anxiety mm -hmm. if you think it. If you experience... Uh, your partner reaching out to you as a demand, you're likely to mm -hmm. still experience that. So what's important is, is that you have to begin to get more in touch with the moment and the pleasure of the moment and the pleasure of the touch and, and begin to let the physiology uh, unfold through the help of maybe a sex pill and most importantly through the help of just relaxing. Yeah. Well, I mean, basically, a, a hug without sexuality is kind of an empty gesture, could be. And well, Viagra never. without, you know, the affection and movement is kind of a technological I never like to think of a hug as an empty gesture. Uh -huh. so, I mean, if the hug is only thought an of... An empty gesture is if, Dr. as Coca suggested, it's a, a preamble to nothing. 